In this video, we're going to look at enzymes and how they are important for certain processes in the body. The first thing to mention might be the fact that enzymes are biological catalysts. And what we mean by that is that they speed up chemical reactions in living things, but don't change in the reaction and so can be reused. Now we could actually take, an, take a body cell, pretty much any body cell and take a look and you will find inside there lots and lots of different molecules that we call enzymes. Now, if we were to expand one as an example, this is a diagram, but important part on this enzyme molecule is that we have an area here that's called the active site. That's the part of the enzyme that's really important and does the job of breaking things down and building them, building them up. We have lots of different types of enzymes. So I've just got in this diagram, I've just got three different kinds, but the key point I'm trying to get across here is that each type of enzyme has a different shaped active site. Some of these enzymes work outside of cells, for example, in digestion, they are transported out of the cell and do their job outside of the cell. Many of the enzymes stay in the cell and work inside the cell, doing various jobs inside the cell. So what are these various jobs that the enzymes are doing? Well, it's all linked to a special key word called metabolism. Enzymes are responsible for the metabolism of the cells. And metabolism basically means either building new molecules from smaller ones or building new molecules, or it can mean breaking down molecules, usually larger molecules into smaller molecules. And the kinds of reaction that we're talking about if we're being specific are things like the ones in this list now you can make a note of these if you wish we are going to visit these in more detail later but we've got six different types of reaction included in our metabolism we've got conversion of glucose to starch uh, the making of lipid molecules making uh, proteins or respiration and breaking down of proteins as well. And if you wish, you can make a note of those, but what we're gonna do just for this video is we're just gonna categorize them into where they are building molecules and where they are breaking molecules down. Uh, there is a video called Metabolism later on where we'll look at this, so it makes a bit more sense than it might do now. So the first one is glucose into starch. This is a building reaction. Making lipid molecules is building larger molecules and synthesizing proteins, that's building, that's making proteins. And the last two are actually breakdown reactions. So respiration and uh, breaking down proteins uh, to form urea are both to do with uh, metabolism, but breaking things down. So let's have a look at what actually goes on when an enzyme is reacting or taking part in a chemical reaction. So in this flask, we've got a enzyme controlled reaction going on. So we can extract enzymes and get them to work outside of cells. And what we have, as you can see in the, in the diagram here, we've got enzyme molecules in green and in the paler orange color, we've got something called the substrate. That's the substance that the enzyme works on. And here you're going to see why the active site or the shape of the active site is so important. So the substrate joins with the active site. The site is complementary in shape. In other words, the substrate fits the active site. We then get a reaction that happens. In this case, the substrate is broken down and that gives us our product. We can, take a, we can take a look at that one more time on the enzyme below. There we go. So we've got the substrate being changed into a product. There's our product label there. And that's how enzymes can work. So that's obviously breaking down, but the opposite way around would happen when we're building up. So let's put some important labels on this diagram. Here in green, we've got our enzyme molecule with its very specific active site that fits this particular substrate. There's our active site labeled there or highlighted there. And our substrate molecule in the paler orange color there can actually join with the active site and then produce the product, which we, we can see on the right hand side. So there's our two product molecules. The next thing to look at is this idea of the lock and key model of how enzymes work. So we can describe the substrate and the active site as either a lock or a key. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. The substrate in the paler orange color there, that acts like a key. 
which fits a particular active site. This is what makes enzymes very specific to only one type of substrate. You need the right key for the right lock, otherwise it won't work. The substrate fits the active site and that allows a reaction to happen. Remember, don't say that the substrate is the same shape because it's not the same shape. It's more correct to say that it fits the active site or it's complementary to the active site. The next thing I want to look at is this idea that enzymes are quite sensitive. In other words, the surrounding conditions can affect how they work. And the first one we're going to look at is this idea of temperature. How does the temperature affect the rate of a reaction that's controlled by enzymes? Well, here's our graph. If we plot temperature versus the rate of reaction, we'll see that as the temperature rises, we have an increase in the rate of reaction up until a certain point after which it drops very rapidly so there's our graph why does that happen well as we raise the temperature of a reaction that's controlled by an enzyme the enzyme gains kinetic energy moves around much more rapidly because of that kinetic energy and will collide with the substrate much more often making the reaction faster problem is after a certain temperature yes we have a lot of kinetic energy but that energy has also got the effect of changing the shape of the active site. It actually breaks down bonds that hold the active site in shape. And that active site at high temperatures is permanently changed. That means the substrate molecules will no longer be able to fit inside there. The reaction won't be able to work. We say the enzyme is denatured. Important key word there. The enzyme is denatured the substrate can no, long, uh, can no longer fit. Just remember, we don't say the enzyme is killed, a mistake I've often seen in written responses. We say it's been denatured. The next thing I want to look at is this idea of the effect of pH. So we've got a pH scale at the bottom there, 1 to 7 or 1 to 6 being acid, 8 to 14 being alkali. And most enzymes have a shape of graph that looks like this. Round about 7, they work at their maximum rate of reaction. And at pHs that are too low or too high, they stop working. They either slow down or stop working. We can have different enzymes, though, that work perhaps in acid. For example, the, the enzymes in your stomach, they would work very well in acid, but not so well in alkali. And also, you can imagine that we have enzymes that work well in alkali, but not in neutral conditions or not in acidic conditions. And the effect on the excessive pHs is very similar to that of when we have too high temperatures. So let's have a quick, make a quick note about that. So here's a diagram of our graph. Our enzyme happily works away at its optimum pH. But when we go beyond this optimum pH, its best pH, similar to before, the active site loses its shape and can no longer work. Just tidy that up a little bit. So again, we say that the enzyme has become denatured because of excessive pH. So there's two ways we can denature an enzyme. One is by having temperatures that are too high, and the other is by having what we call excessive pH. In other words, too much in the wrong region, to either too alkali or too acidic. Just to mention actually though, um, the temperature that most enzymes work best is around about 37 degrees, which is our body temperature. And that's a reason why the body must be kept around about that temperature, or in fact, very close to that temperature because of the enzymes. Okay, so lots we covered there. Let's do a summary just to go over it again very quickly and to have something that we could possibly refer to for quick reference to remind us of this video. So the first thing to remember is that there's many different kinds of enzymes, many different types, and they are found in both plants and in animals. They control metabolism, which we said was basically either building molecules or breaking them down. We talked about the lock and key model of enzymes, where only one substrate will fit a particular enzyme, and that's because the substrate is like a key, where the active site is like a lock. So enzymes are very specific to one type of substrate. Once that happens, we have a product that's made. We also said that enzymes are affected by temperature, and the best way to show that would be a graph. 
that looks a bit like this. We've gone over this already. The enzyme at the back end of the graph denatures, and that means the active site has permanently changed shape. It no longer fits the substrate. Then we said that we the enzymes are also affected by pH. So there's our pH scale at the bottom, and we had three different graphs that look like that. Each of the enzymes works best at a different pH, but they can be denatured by excessive pH. Last thing I want to mention is a link to the next video, which is that in enzymes are very important in digestion. There's a whole range of them that work in digestion, and we need to know about those, and we're going to do that in the next video. It might be worth mentioning that here that you here that if you are making revision cards like this, it's always useful, often useful to use diagrams because they are a bit more memorable than just plain text. But either way, that's the video done for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.